Well, welcome this, uh, today to At The Cross Live. We're so glad that you could spend some time with us today. It's, uh, it's going to be a great program. <laughs> yes, we, we've been having some technical issues, but listen, God is a good God. God is a good God. Uh, our, our, our topic today is, are you going through a painful episode? Are you going through a painful episode? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you, Lord, that we are approaching the season when you came, Lord. You came to earth as a man, Lord, and uh, to experience everything we experience, of which pain was one of the experiences you had, Lord. So you know when, when we are going through painful times, you know exactly when we are going through painful times, you know exactly what we are going through. And we thank you, Lord, that you are able to to empathize and to sympathize, but not just that. You're the God-man. You're able to help us. So we thank you. We pray for people that are watching the program today, Lord, are going through a painful episodes in their lives. And Lord, we ask you, Father, that you will draw near to them, Lord, near to comfort them in the time that they're going, in the, this, this terrible time that they're going through. Lord, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, I, I, I read a, a, a heart-rending story in a book by Dr. J. David Jeremiah titled, God Has Not Forgotten You. God Has Not Forgotten You. Yeah. In it, it, it tells about a pastor, you know, uh, well, well it, he was actually a pastor and a, and a, and a university teacher. And his name is Dr. Earl. McQuay, Dr. Earl McQuay. He said it was a typical October day for Dr. Earl McQuay. Until it wasn't. Dr. McQuay was, uh, gave a morning lecture to his seminary students at Columbia International University in South Carolina. And, and the subject was the stages of grief that we go through. The, the, the stages of grief. And as part of the class, he read aloud the heart-tugging testimony of a father whose son, a strapping young man, had died following heart surgery. So after class, Dr. McQuay proceeded to the college dining room and, and was just about to take his first bite of lunch when a secretary appeared at his side. And, and Dr. McQuay said, she said, my, you have an emergency phone call from North Carolina. And uh, Dr. McQuay said, his, my heart skipped a beat. You see, his own son, Tim, a newly married medical student, was in North Carolina. So the news was tragic. And you see, while adjusting his car stereo sound system, Tim had lost control of his vehicle and the and the crash was severe. And tragically, Tim passed away. Nothing could have prepared the McQuay family for the ensuing grief, anguish, and pain which enveloped their lives. No one likes pain. No one volunteers for pain. I might even go as far as to say that no one but a psychopath deliberately inflicts pain on himself. And no one but a sadist enjoys creating pain for others. We do all we can to avoid pain. You see, when you're in pain, regular activities are often put on hold. Pain is the great immobilizer. There's emotional pain and there's physical pain. For example, you know what emotional pain feels like if you've ever been rejected or, or abandoned or, or been betrayed. When we deal with our emotional pain as soon as it arises by receiving God's help and, and healing, the pain is generally temporary. But sometimes the emotional pain just lingers on and on because we may not know how to deal with it, hoping it will just go away or heal itself. 
or or we may not know how which way to go what we should do pain will do that to you some people think that pain is is inevitable and and and, and, uh, and it's a normal part of every person's life so they just continue to struggle on without relief but the fallout of ongoing lingering emotional pain a pain that goes unaddressed and unhealed it can be devastating to a person and, and to a family for example are you lonely do you feel restless and frustrated is anxiety eating away at your joy do you feel burned out insecure or broken as if you are a failure these are conditions are all symptoms of emotional wounds that shackle us and weaken us and, and make us vulnerable but, but let me say this to you God desires for you to live in emotional freedom and strength Jesus is the healer Exodus chapter 15 and verse uh, 26 declares that I am the Lord who heals you but there's also physical pain for example you know what it feels like to experience like a sudden strong outburst of migraine headaches that comes really close to being unbearable unbearable not just that but you become worried that the headache may be caused by a brain tumor or, or something like that or you fear that you would have to live with pain for the rest of your life maybe I'm talking to you and and your whole life has been one of physical anguish your whole life your whole lifetime may be one of physical pain your whole lifetime may be one of physical suffering friend our greatest hope in in times of pain is to find healing from God uh, I'm not saying that God promises to remove all our pain in this life but he does promise to be with us in our painful times to give us hope and purpose in the despair of our aching bodies and soul so I, I want you to listen to me the only way to deal successfully with pain is to view it through the eyes of God so today what I want to do is to take a few moments and, and, and examine three principles from Scripture of how to deal with pain or to view pain through the eyes of, of God. Principle number one in viewing pain through the eyes of God, we must go ahead and feel the earth. It's okay. Go ahead and feel the hurt. Look with me in 2 Samuel, the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 18 and verse 33. It says, the king, that is David, was overcome with emotion. He went up to the room over the gateway and burst into tears. And as he went, he cried, oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Can you feel the pathos of the situation that's unfolding here? This is no melodramatic description. This is reality. So, so let me give you the background of this passage of Scripture. King David's son, Absalom, was killed in an insurrection against his father. And in spite of all that had happened, David was greatly grieved and, and deeply distressed about the death of his son. And so he expressed it. My friend, there'll come a time when you feel the hurt and the loss and, and you'll probably weep as deeply with loud, gut-wrenching sobs as David wept. It's, it's not a sin to feel the hurt and the ache of trials and then to express it for example 
you know, you, you know, when you when, when your car breaks down without warning, or or your children are sick, or you lose your job, or a spouse rejects you, y your emotions become fragile and tender. Don't tell me you feel as if you're walking on cloud nine at that time. Can I get a witness? But here's the, here's the most important thing you need to know. The Lord Jesus Christ does not expect for you to act as if all is well either. Jesus knows what it's like to experience grief and pain of, of the heart so deep that it tears at the very fiber of your being. Maybe, maybe right now you feel used, you feel abandoned, and, and above all, you, all else, you feel unloved. Maybe you've been married for a long time, and, and you've sacrificed your career for your marriage, and only to have your husband break the news to you that he fell in love with a much younger woman. And and of all the things to feel, being unloved is perhaps the worst. Uh, am I telling the truth? One person wrote that there is no greater pain than the pain to offer your love to someone only to have that person throw it back in your face. The pain of rejected love, it, it's an awful pain. Lady, Jesus understands and cares for you. Jesus understands your hurt and he cries with you. He shares your pain and sorrow. Beloved, can I share this with you? Don't waste your pain. No, don't waste your pain. Worship God with your pain. That means it's okay to express to God your honest feelings, no, no matter how ugly they may seem. God is not intimidated by your pain, nor is he unaware of the ugly thoughts running through your mind. So he invites you, invites you uh, right now to tell him, tell him about it. Tell him about everything that's going on with you. Let Jesus Christ help you to bear the burden. As a matter of fact, the Bible gives us a number of examples of people who, who brought their anger and their disappointment and, and, uh, and they brought their pain to God. Just read the book of Psalms. That's what it's all about. You know what? God didn't send a bolt of, a bolt of lightning to zap them dead when they brought their ugly feelings to God. That should encourage you and me that we can express our raw emotions to God when we are in pain. He is strong enough to take our pain and our bruised emotions and produce something worthwhile out of them, something beautiful. Bring, bring the ashes of your situation to God and let Him produce something beautiful out of it. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is touched. He's touched with the feelings of our weakness and infirmities. Why? Why? It's because he was, he was also born of woman. And it's because he's also, he also suffered here on earth. Now, now I can go to Jesus when I suffer and I can know that Jesus understands because he himself suffered. He suffered. Sir, hear me well. Jesus Christ loves you with an everlasting love and he will not abandon you nor forsake you when sorrow touches your life. Bless his holy name. Not only must we go to God, uh, uh, go, go ahead and feel the hurt, but the second principle, number two, principle number two, in viewing pain through the eyes of God, listen to this one. God allows pain for the greater good. God allows pain for the greater good. Look with me. 
2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8 and 9, verses 8 and 9. It says, three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. I don't, I don't know whether the Apostle Paul was praying concerning a pain in his body or his poor eyesight, as the Bible talks about, or, or, or a person causing him great difficulty. But he prayed three times. He, he prayed, Lord, take it away. Take it away. Aren't you glad that God uses, God, or God sees clearly the things that we will never understand. You see, it was for Paul's own protection that God allowed what the Bible calls a messenger of Satan to harass Paul. One of the age-old critical questions I often ask of Christian is, why does a loving God allow so much suffering in the world? As a matter of fact, the faith of many believers have been overthrown over the years because people cannot accept the fact that God allows and will even use suffering to produce good in our lives. Oh, you got to see this. It's often, it's often in times of struggles that God shapes our character. He will use struggles to alter or course or or to put us in a position to benefit in ways we cannot see during the difficulty we may be enduring so so when we run from problems we are really running away from what God is doing in our lives let me share a great verse with you from Psalm, from the Psalm, Psalm chapter 4, Psalm chapter 4 and verse 1. This is in the Darby's New Translation, and it, and it reads this way. I love it. It says, listen to this, in pressure, in pressure, thou hast enlarged me. In pressure, thou hast enlarged me. W watch this, watch this. Ordinarily, we think of pressure as reducing the compass or or volume of, a, of its object. But God uses pressure to produce spiritual enlargement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, prosperity does little for us, but adversity produces growth and maturity in our lives. I love what the great preacher Charles Spurgeon, uh, you know, he was the preacher of another era, and uh, hear he, 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 he what he once said. He said, I'm afraid uh, that all the grace that, I've, uh, that I got out of my comfortable and easy times and, and happy hours might almost lie on a penny. But the good, he said, the good that I've, that I've received from my sorrows and pains and griefs is altogether incalculable. He, he, he ends by saying, what do I not owe? to the hammer and the anvil, the fire and the file. Affliction is the best bit of furniture in my house. Friend, we've bought into the lie of this world that hardship is always the result of failure. So then we avoid suffering at all costs. Maybe in his infinite love and wisdom, God will take away one or more of the thorns you're experiencing in, in your life today. But you know what? If, if Paul's life is, is an example of how God deals with us, God will leave at least, at least one thorn, one painful situation with us. Why? So that we might remain humble and, and, and always dependent on His power. Our, our, our human, our human nature cries out begging and sobbing for God to remove the pain and suffering. 
But, but, but listen to me now. There are two ways that God can bring relief. Two ways. He can do it with by removing the load or by strengthening the shoulder that bears the load. Oh, I love that. L let, let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. Instead of removing the thorn from Paul's life, God strengthened his shoulders by giving and the, what the Bible calls sufficient grace to Paul. I thank God for his grace. My friend, you got to get this. You can't receive God's strength until you acknowledge your own weakness. And we can't receive the sufficiency of God's grace until we acknowledge our own insufficiency. But, but, but here's what usually happens. Here's how things will happen with us. We want the Father God to take away the pain, to solve the problem, and to get out of the situation, but that's not what we really need. What we really need is God. We need the Almighty God in the situation. You see, the very problem you're seeking to get away from, the very situation you desire to get out of, is the very thing that's causing you to talk to God and to spend time with God and to depend on God. You'll be stronger when you're weak because you will have no other choice than to draw strength from God. You'll do better when you're weak because you will have to rely on God. And watch this. Oh, the Father God makes you one of the greatest promises in Scripture. Here it is in Romans. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Romans 8 and verse 28. It says, And we know that God causes everything to work together, and listen to this, not in isolation, but together, for the good of those who love God, and are called according to his purpose for them. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> so not only we should go ahead and, and feel the hurt and know that God allows pain for the greater good, but finally, principle number three in viewing pain through the eyes of God is to trust God, trust God's promises for the future. Trust God's promises for the future. Let's look at Revelation. Revelation chapter 21 and verses 3 and 4. Revelation chapter 21 and verses 3 and 4. He says, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear I love that every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain all these things are gone forever <laughs> it's a great passage isn't it in uh, in the fall of 1971 John Lennon releases hit song imagine in, in the first few lines, it says this. It says, imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people, listen, listen to this, living just for today. In, in the remainder of the song, he describes a, a world of peace and hope that that would result from living a life void of faith and ignorance of spiritual rewards and consequences for our actions. I, I know that some people consider Imagine the greatest song of all times. But to be honest with you, for me, it would take a mighty big dose of mind-altering drugs to believe that life would be better without faith in God and, and that heaven is not real. Watch this. Jesus said in John chapter 14, John chapter 14 and verses 2 and 3, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. So, so somebody says, I'm not sure if I would go to heaven or not. Well, well, let me say this to you. While you have physical life and breath to choose, my brother, my sister, choose correctly. Come to Jesus Christ who has prepared the way for you. Jesus is the only way to the Father dwelling in heaven. Arthur, Arthur Larry Crabb writes about the importance of eternity's perspective on suffering in his book titled Inside Out. And he writes, he says, modern Christianity in dramatic reversal of its biblical form promises, listen, rele to relieve pain, the pain of living in a fallen world. He says the message is too often the same, the promise of bliss now. They tell us complete satisfaction can be ours this side of heaven. Hear me well, folks. That's not true. That's not true. He said, Pastor, how do you know? From Scripture. Hear, hear what it says in Job. You remember him who went through a lot of pain? Job chapter 5 and verse 7. It says, people are born for trouble as readily as sparks fly up from a fire. But, but not just that. Let's look at our experience in life. Tell me something. Have you, have you ever met a person who did not have troubles? Did not have heartaches and disappointments and difficulties of some kind? You see, fear and, and sickness rob us of happiness and and, and, and broken relationships and shattered dreams all destroy our peace, don't they? But, but here's the good news. One of God's greatest promises is, is that all of these will be forgotten in heaven. I like that. You see, the Bible says the supreme reality of heaven is that there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. Why? For the former things, the things of now, these have all passed away, gone. You almost hear these words, almost always hear these words uh, read at funeral services. Uh, and I believe these words are some of the most precious words in, in all of Scripture. And and I must say with good reason for that. You see, it's because they're filled with so much hope and, and assurance. This sinful fallen world has left so many people beaten and broken. The pain it inflicts often overwhelms us, almost crushing us. But these eternal words promises that, that in eternity, in eternity, all that causes pain and sorrow will forever be taken away. Sorrow and crying will all be gone in eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon, my friend, God's promise will be fulfilled and we'll be in the Father's house. But I, I gotta be honest with you. If you're not a Christian, this world is the best it's ever going to be for you. But, but for those of us who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, this world is the worst it's ever going to get because it's only going to get better and better when we move into our, our heavenly home. Glory to God. Isn't that what Jesus says? He goes to prepare a place for us. Yeah. What am I saying? I'm saying... Beyond every crisis lies heaven. This, this is the great certainty and assurance we have when we face fear or discouragement or, or despondency or pain. Ahead of us is heaven. <laughs> Jesus himself, with his own gentle and gracious hand, listen what the, he says, he will wipe away every tear. 
what it means is there'll never be a tear in heaven. Not even a single tear. Can you believe it? It's true. I'm saying there'll be nothing sad. There'll be nothing disappointing. There'll be nothing unfulfilling. There'll be nothing lacking. No. There'll be nothing wrong. There'll be nothing to cry about in, the, in your home in heaven. I'm saying that, you know, tears like tears of misfortune or tears of poverty or, or tears of loneliness or tears of lost love or tears of sympathy or, or mercy or, or pity, tears of remorse or tears of regret. Maybe you're experiencing tears of neglect, tears of yearning for what cannot be. What? They're all gone forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These tears will never return, ever. There'll be nothing. There'll be nothing. I like, I like what this writer writes. He says, he says, there'll be nothing but unmitigated, <laughs> unrestrained, unlimited, unhindered, unrestricted, undiminished joy <laughs> for all eternity. Are you ready for it? But as I close, I close with this, with this story. I love this story. When, when Marco Polo, the famous 13th century explorer, left Venice, and went to the Far East, he was amazed at the beauty of the place. And when he went back home, he tried to tell the people of, of the beauties that he had seen, but they had a hard time believing the scenes he described. In fact, the skeptical countrymen thought he was outright lying, and they dismissed his reports as the ravings of a madman or a charlatan. <laughs> but when he lay on his, his deathbed, and he was urged by his detractors to recant, to set the record straight, and, and to redraw the stories he had told them about China and the lands of the Far East. What, what am I saying? They were asking about what they thought were gross exaggerations. And his reply was simple. You know what he said? I did not tell you one half of what I saw. Isn't it interesting that Jesus Christ, the man from heaven, had similar difficulties when he spoke about heaven? Precious people, whatever heaven is and wherever it is, this much is certain. We shall never be able to tell, not a half, not even a hundred part of what it is like. But, but listen to me carefully, please. Heaven is beyond the limits of our language. Yes, we borrow such terms as, as streets of gold and, or, or pearly gates to indicate the incomparable grandeur of heaven. But our language could never really do it justice, you know, because our very language misleads us since we are forced to use only language we know. And all human language is earthbound. <laughs> yes. They have not come close to describing the glories of heaven. I, I want you to listen. I want you to listen to D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody's beautiful poem of heaven. It's that the light of heaven is the face of Jesus. The joy of heaven is the presence of of Jesus. The melody of heaven is the name of Jesus. The harmony of heaven is the praise of Jesus. The theme of heaven is the work of Jesus. The employment of heaven is the service of Jesus. The duration of heaven is the eternity of Jesus Christ. The fullness of heaven is Jesus Christ himself. So here's my question. 
is your name written in heaven? Does heaven rule your life? Do you look forward? Do you look forward to being in God's presence forever? My friend, you must decide. But I want to tell you, it makes all the difference when pain touches your life. Our question today is, are you going through a painful episode? Are you going through a painful episode? And how do you deal with it? Let us know. We'd love to talk with you. Let, let us know. Because if it's one thing that in uh, that is normal to our existence here is pain. Sooner or later we order we either coming out of, of a painful episode or we're in a painful episode or we're entering a painful episode. I want you to know as that God He cares about you. Wherever you are in the spectrum, God cares about you. And He wants to be there with you right at this time. That's what he said. He says, come unto me, all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. He said, he goes, Jesus goes on to say, take my yoke upon you, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, will you trust him today? Will you trust him to say, let me just talk to him, just pray to him, and say, Lord, here's my pain. Here's what's causing me to stay up nights. Will you just trust him? Give us a call. Let us know. You can call us on on the phones, uh, it's, it's 416-255-4444 or one 877 uh, to 127677 or get, with, get in touch with us on Facebook or YouTube. One thing we have people monitoring, monitors Facebook and YouTube, you'll find people there to pray with you, to give you hope. You know, people who, if you, you say, well, I, I want to pray, but I really don't know how to pray. I, I want to pray, but the pain is so terrible right now. Maybe I'm talking to you right now, and, and, and the pain is so terrible. Maybe you just happened, just happened to be, to be to tune in. Listen, nothing with God is happenstance. Nothing, nothing with God is accidental. It's because He wanted you to watch. So talk to us. Let me introduce you to my my dear friend. Jude. Jude, welcome to At The Cross Yes, Yes, uh, Dr. Koval, it's yeah. always a pleasure to be here. Dr. Koval, you know, and uh, as I told you, uh, that I just returned from Jamaica, yeah. five days, uh, wonderful time, and I felt like I'm a naturalized Jamaican now, you know, <laughs> speaking a little patois here and there. I know you were laughing at me the other day, but having said that, what a program, what a, what a message tonight. Oh my God, are you going through a painful episode? As Dr. Cole was, Cole was sharing, there are so many things uh, uh, coming in my head. You know, the, the Word of God says in Isaiah 53, He's acquainted with our grief and uh, carried our sorrows. The chastisement of our peace was upon him by his wounds or by his stripes. We are healed. But there was a verse after that. It says, the father turned his face away from him, from the son who was dying at the cross. 
it, it literally pained, pained the father. He could not able to bear his son, only begotten son, the darling of heaven. The deposit of heaven be literally uh, uh, in him who was going through this, this agony and this painful death. He have to turn his way. Mel Gibson, who have directed this movie, uh, Passion of the Christ. And he said, uh, when a reporter asked him about the, the Mary, the mother of Jesus, why you are not showing her in a very somber and solemn attitude? This is his reply. He said, I want to portray a mother, it's been played by a wonderful actress, a drama, uh, drama actress, wonderful, wonderfully been portrayed. I want to portray a mother that who have given birth to a son at the age of 14 and fast forward she must be in her mid 40s, late 40s. But I want to portray that, that pain and the anguish and the sorrow and despair to watch her son dying at the cross. She wanted to cry out loud, but she couldn't. She wanted to say a few words that she couldn't, but the anguish in her face. My brothers and sisters, yes, you are going through something. I am personally going through something. But nothing is impossible with our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, He took your grief. He carried your sorrows. He nailed it at the cross of Calvary. Yes, for you. That's why in, in book of Luke 4.18, he says, let me read that word quickly. Luke 4.18, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He was reading that word out of the scrolls of Isaiah, book of Isaiah in written. My brothers and sisters, this is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is your redemption. He is your freedom. Not the psychic, not the new age, not just reading all those reports out there, calls, positive thinking, no. It's Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, it is Jesus Christ. Yes, you are going through a painful, agonizing, anguishing process, even right this hour. Dr. Koval just have mentioned about, the, uh, Dr. Jeremiah have read that uh, report of this uh, professor. But even Dr. Jeremiah himself have said he is a cancer survivor. He said there was a time in his life 
he doesn't even know way, which way to go. So he was consulting another minister of the Lord. And that minister said to him, David, you are going through this process. Your life is never be the same again. That's why Psalm 23 says, Yea, you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. Yes, your feet might be wobbly, slipping, your mental state will be uh, unbalanced, You don't know where you stand at a certain point. People are talking to you, but it's not registering into your soul. But in the meantime, the Lord is saying, I love you. I love you. I care for you. You are my child. I died for you. Today is your day of redemption. Today is your day of purpose. Today is a day of turning a new leaf in your life. You don't have to wake up another day with the way you are right this hour. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what? I, I, I like what you, what you, what you are talking about. Yes, sir. Um, if you ever think that uh, that God doesn't understand or God will change his mind about you and how much he loves you, yeah. uh, you think about it. If God wanted to change his mind, think about this. Mm -hmm. Imagine Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. his own son, yes. coming to earth and he knew yes. exactly what was going to happen yes. to him. Yes. The worst mm. death that human being yes. had ever thought of. Mm -hmm. He was going to, his son was up to go to go through it. Mm -hmm. Think if it's your son. Do you think, you, you, do you believe you would change your mind? Mm -hmm. Mm. And yet, God didn't. No. God didn't. It's a plan. Yeah, that was the plan. You know, you know what he said? That's why the prophet says in, in Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah said, he says, Lord, who has believed our message? Yes. Lord, we have a message, but mm. who would believe it? Mm -hmm. Who would believe it? He says, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? revealed? He says, he grew up. That's Jesus mm. grew up. And this was written like, what, 750 years yes, before, before Jesus came. Jesus. He says, he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a, a root out of dry ground. Dry ground. He had no beauty and no majesty to attract us to him. Mm. Nothing in, in his appearance that we should desire him. Mm. He was despised and rejected Which by men. Man. A man of sorrows so and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom, mm. listen, we hide our faces. Amen. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Mm. Surely he took up our infirmities and he carried our sorrows. But we consider, listen, yet we consider him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Mm. But he was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace Amen. was upon him. Yes. If God had wanted to change yes. his mind, he would have. He would have. He would have changed. Mm. So he will, he will not change his mind about mm. you, my friend. What you're going through, God loves you. Mm. He cares for you. We're just saying, listen, mm. you know what? All of us go through times when we, mm. we, don't, we, we don't know whether we're flying right side up or upside down. We don't know. We, we, we're so confused, especially when one thing happened and another thing happens and nothing happens. All, and, and, and it's like we get vertigo. Mm. Mm. But there's a God. Mm. He's on the throne. Praise the Lord. It, there's, there's a verse in, in Psalm. In the Psalm, the Psalm it says, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Mm. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Here it says, the Lord is on his heavenly throne. Mm. 
God is still on the throne, my Amen. friend. Amen. God is still on the throne. Mm-hmm. Let, let's, so some people, are, and thank you so much for writing in. Thank yes. you so much for writing in. Beverly, Beverly Grant's writings are good night, everyone. Thanks, Beverly. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, listen, we need to hear from you. We need to hear from you. Amen. We don't want to be here just doing stuff for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And Christine, Christine Callender uh, said, trust. Ah, oh, here it is. That's true. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. That's it. You know, the, you remember, the, there's an old hymn. Trust and Amen. obey, for there's no, no, other, other, no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and, and obey. obey. Praise and Lord. Jadine, Jadine Finnegan, mm. he says, Bless night, my prophet, host, and, and everyone online. Thank you. Thank you uh, for writing in. Uh, Patricia, she said, uh, Mrs. Sark said, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. You know what? Thank you so much, Patricia. I tell you what, that's so important. When you go through times of pain and and suffering, one of the greatest things you can do, the best things you can do, is to get your Bible. Amen. Go to the Psalms and read it slowly, like, for instance, Psalm 23. And just read it slowly. Mm. Glory to God. The psalmist says, even though I, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know what? I love what Winston Churchill said. It's if you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep on moving. Amen. Keep on. That's Amen. it. Amen. Keep on moving. Amen. God will give you the strength when you're going Amen. through the, the painful episode. And I tell you, you know, listen. Without, you say without, without. I'd, I'd love a life that is, is devoid of pain. Could I tell you, you wouldn't want it. Mm. No, mm. you wouldn't want it mm. at all. Mm. You see, mm. pain has a purpose. purpose yeah. A purpose. For, ex- yeah, for, ex- right. for example, if something goes wrong, and we live on earth, this is earth. This yeah. is not heaven. Yeah. This is earth. If, if, if something goes wrong in your body, mm. Think of it if you had no pain to mm. warning. It's a warning system. It's an early warning system to say something is wrong. Mm. What if you had no pain? Mm. Mm. What if you had no pain? Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's some diseases, you know, that people have that, you know, the limbs, they, 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 they feel no pain. You could put your hand on a hot stove and they wouldn't feel, feel it. Anything. They could. They would destroy. So they destroy no. themselves. Mm. They mm. destroy themselves. What I'm saying is that God knows what He's doing, mm. and He said in this. That's why Jesus. The Bible said Jesus Christ came, and He experienced everything you experienced. Only, it, 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 it was more concentrated. It, it was, it was more terrible. Why? You see, we go through suffering and. And we find every point of relief that we can. Not him. Not him. He was tempted, but he never gave in. Never gave. Think of think of the pressure constantly. But he never gave in. Mm. So he knows what you're feeling. Mm. He knows what you are Very going fine. through. Uh, uh, Jadine Finnegan. Uh, uh, says requesting prayer for breakthrough uh, by his stripes we were healed it says uh, it says I guess so let's deal with that for, would you pray for Jadine yes. Jadine yes. Finnegan he yes. says did, didn't say what kind of a breakthrough you're looking for let, let us know mm. you know what it's, uh, why is that important because some people just say you know pray that God will bless me okay what you know the, the, man, the, the, the man came to Jesus, the blind man came to Jesus, and, and, and Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? Yes, what do you want me to do for you? And he says, Lord, I want to see. I want to see. So be specific with God. Be specific with him, not just God, bless me. So, if you're, Janine, if you're looking for a breakthrough, what kind of a breakthrough are you looking for? Is it physical? Is it, is it uh, financial? Is it a family breakthrough or a breakthrough on your job or what this? But would you, would you pray? Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. 
Father God, on this day, Lord God, I bring uh, J.D. Uh, to the throne room of grace right now. Father God, on this day, Lord God, I command, Lord God, Lord God, for her mental state right now, in the name of Jesus, I command every agonizing mental defeated thoughts that's coming in her head right now, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Lord God, touch her mind, body, soul, and her spirit now. She has been loved by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord God, like J.D. and Lord God, the many others who are going through a mental defeat, a mental anguish, mental uh, uh, agonizing thoughts. And some of them are going through some suicidal thoughts, suicidal mindset. In the name of Jesus, I command you, the demon of suicidal thoughts, any thoughts is not of you, God. I command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now, you are healed, you are transformed, you are redeemed. And Lord God, I pray, Lord God, Jadine and her, uh, and her children and her family being blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Lord God, I, I, I don't know, uh, there is somebody going through some uh, real anguishing pain of your marriage. You are just tuned in, as Pastor was talking about, you just tuned in to watch this. The Lord had me to tell you don't listen to the ungodly people. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. As Pastor Koval has said, the word of God is your resort. Not the lawyers, not some ungodly friends, not some ungodly counselors. It is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today, Lord God, I command that marriage situation or whatever the situation it is shall be healed and come in an alignment by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. You have been diagnosed with some, some issue in your body. Some issue. Something going on in your body. You don't know which way to go. The Lord has me to tell you, He is your healer. Book of Isaiah 53 it says, By His wounds, by His stripes, you are healed. In Jesus' name, you are healed. J.D., you are healed. Every single one of you, you are listening. Whatever the cause it is, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is your healer, is your redemptive person. He is your redeemer. Because he is not only went to the cross and died for you, he resurrected for you. Resurrected. He is right there with you in Jesus' name. So today, today, give Jesus a chance. Yes, tonight, this hour, is your time of turnaround in your life. As Dr. Koval has read that passage in Romans 8, 28, and we know, and you know, all things work together for good to them, those who call according to the purpose of God. Even this terrible situation, it is working out for your own good. Don't you dare take any quick decisions. 
that's not going to lead you anywhere. Place it at the hand of Jesus. Amen. He will direct you. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Lord Jesus. Um, uh, so, uh, 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 Jadine right in again says, by his stripes we are healed. Uh, uh, um, said, somebody writes in, good evening, good evening to all. Pastor, who will go to heaven? <laughs> that's, a, mm. that's, a, that's a great one. Who, who will go to heaven? <laughs> You know what? It's uh, that's a great question. Uh, people have different ideas about about heaven, and, and many people have no understanding, you know, of of, of God or, or or what heaven's about. They simply say heaven is a better place. Heaven is a better place, and and where we will all go when we die. In other words, no matter how we live, you know, uh, if, I'm a, if I'm a good person, you know, I'll, I'll go to heaven. So, so but our, so our ideas about heaven, they are, they're vague. They're vague, to say the least. It's like, I hope I'll win the lottery. Uh, you know, I, I hope I, I go to heaven. I'm, I'm most people have no idea. I don't even think about heaven until maybe they go to a funeral or, 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 or something. <laughs> go to a funeral and, and, and at that point they, uh, you know, they will talk about heaven in the message, a funeral message. They will talk about heaven. So, so it, it's, uh, but you know what? Or you'll say only good people go to heaven. So. So re that's why I say it's a, it's a great question. It's a great question. But hear what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So apparently there's some people that the Bible says are going to perish. It does not mean annihilation. No, <laughs> when you die, it doesn't mean annihilation. It just means you're perishing. We're all going to end up one or two places, heaven or hell. In, in John 3 and verse 36, Jesus goes, Jesus goes on to say, He says, whoever believes in the Son, listen, has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life because God's wrath remains on him. God's wrath remain on him. And there's a, a verse in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. It says, it's appointed unto man once to die, and then we're judged. Mm -hmm. So uh, according to this scripture, it's not everyone who dies, they're going to heaven. Not everyone. That's what. So, and Pastor, look up for me there. In, in Matthew, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 46. Read that for me. Matthew 25 and verse 46. You see, God is holy and God is perfect and heaven is a perfect place. It's where God dwells. And any imperfection, yes. Yes. Yeah, any Matthew, imperfection Matthew in heaven cannot go. Yeah. It can't be there. And this is why Jesus Christ came and died. Because he paid the penalty for sin. The Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 says, it says, there is none righteous, not even one. Yes, we like to think that we're so good. But the Bible says there's none righteous, not even one of us. Yes, Matthew, Matthew 14. 25 and verse 46. M Matthew 25. Matthew 25 and verse 46, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Praise Jesus. Yeah. So, so the, the people who go to heaven, yes, they have come to Jesus Christ and yes. received his forgiveness. Yes. His blood has washed, and that's the only thing that can Amen. deal with sin. You have to deal with sin by blood. Only the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed that will wash your conscience, your heart, and make you pure. Matthew That's 25, 25, 25. Matthew 25 and verse 46. What, verse 46, yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse 46, 45, 46. 
and these and these will go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into eternal life yeah so there's some people that will go away listen to this everlasting punishment mm. just and i know that they, they right now and sometimes you hear some talk shows now and they come against christianity and they they'll tell you oh you die you die mm. you know no mm. at least you're annihilated yeah. cease to exist my brother my sister you will mm. never cease to exist no. once you're born you will mm. never cease to exist the body can die, this body, but not your soul and your spirit. It can. They're, they're, they're no. deathless. Mm. They're deathless. Mm -hmm. So G what Jesus is saying, some will go, right? Some will go to everlasting punishment. Mm. Because if you can't die, hell is simply a place of everlasting punishment forever yeah. and forever. Just the, the opposite mm. of that is heaven, mm. being in heaven with God. Actually, hell is just a, a place where there's no God. Mm. That God is not there. That's it. God is not there. Some people say, well, I'm going to hell on earth. No. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. There's no way to describe. There's no way to describe what hell is like. Mm. No. You're going through some hard times, some difficult times, but it's not hell. Hell is, is, a, is a zillion times worse than what, you'd, what you'll ever go through mm. here. What you'll ever go through here. That's why we recognize, when you recognize your need of a savior. You see, they're not, it's not bad people that go to hell and good people go to heaven. No, it's forgiven people that goes to heaven. Yeah, you yeah. come to Jesus yeah. Christ and he forgives you of your sin. Mm. He said, Lord, I come to you to bring you my sin and I want to receive your forgiveness. That's it. It's forgiven people yeah. that go to heaven. Yeah. So, have you received God's forgiveness? Mm -hmm. Have you received mm -hmm. God's forgiveness? You know, uh, yes. Dr. Corbel, uh, if I may say to you, when you, yes. are, when you are speaking this word, I, it just uh, this verse came into my head. It said, I know ye not. I don't know you. Mm -hmm. You know, that verse is really scares me mm -hmm. up to this day. I, I did, uh, I healed the sick, I gave water, mm -hmm. uh, I fed the multitude. But God returned on and says, I don't know you. No. Because your, your heart is far from me. You yeah. just gave me only a lip service. Mm -hmm. I know ye not. I don't know you. R.W. Shamba, great man of God passed away, Pentecostal preacher. He wrote a book called You Pray in Tongues, Still Go to Hell. Mm -hmm. Pray in Tongues, Still Go to Hell. I mean, like, I, I remember that book years and years ago. And I said, what? Pray in Tongues, Still Go to Hell? My brothers and sisters, be very careful, careful of the way you conduct your life, where you speak, where you uh, uh, love the others, where you talk to the others. This is not for the others. Christians, born again believers, including me, I'm speaking to myself too. Be very careful. We are living in the last days. His imminent return to this world anytime. The rapture will take place, whether you like it or not. Yes, the rapture will take place. There are some mainstream uh, Pentecostal churches or whatever the churches they are, they are not even preaching the rapture. They are not talking about the virgin birth. They are not talking about the, the crucifixion and the resurrection of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
You know, this great man who was sitting beside me, every program before he starts, he starts with obeying communion, remembering the breaking of the bread and drinking out of its cup. He always started with that. He even taught me. So I able to do this. My brothers and sisters, we are living in a very scary, scary time. Only one way to heaven. I am originally from Sri Lanka. I grew up in a I grew up as a Roman Catholic. My mom named me Jude because my mom prayed to St. Jude. I was conceived and I was born. The reason I'm saying all of that, I grew up in a country of many religions. All, road, all roads lead to Rome, kind of, that kind of a belief. It's only one way to heaven through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not Buddha, not Confucius, not Shiva, not uh, uh, Muhammad, no, not anything. Not even through your pastor you believe. Not even through your bishop or, or evangelist or whoever. It's only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Only through him. Jesus says, I'm the way, truth and the life. No man come to the Father but through me. What is troubling you? Why you are still fighting? Because I see in my spirit, there are, when I'm talking, when Dr. Cole was talking, you are still having a tug of war, like a war. Like flesh is warring against the spirit. Should I listen to them? Should I off it? Should I do this? Should I do that? That stubborn, that, that corrupted mind was battling you. My brothers and sisters, tonight I am pleading with you as Dr. Koval has pleaded with you. Not only this program, this man been pleading with you for years and years every time in this program. But my brothers and sisters, tonight is your night of victory. Give it to him. Give it to him. It's not worth it of fighting. You know, end of the day, oh, you'll go to the tablets, more pills, more psychiatric treatment. Or just open up a bottle, drink it. Then next morning, you get up with such a soberness, such a headache, such a worn out attitude. And you start all over again. Instead of doing that, why don't you give this, this, this rock, this burden you are carrying just put it at the feet of Jesus. As like Dr. Koval read, uh, cast all your care upon him. He will care for thee. My burden is light. The yoke is easy, saith the Lord. In book of Isaiah 10, 27 says, in that day, that is today, tonight, the yoke be destroyed. The burden be removed because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. As I was prophesying, because what's going to be coming ahead so much thousands of years later at the cross of Calvary. Amen. 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 Uh, Jadine, Jadine Finnegan wrote back and says, uh, Oh, I, I want breakthrough in every area of my life. Everywhere I look, there's blockage. There's a blockage. Uh, let, me just, let me just take a, a bit of time. Just to just to encourage you. One is that if you, first of all, you know, maybe uh, even a clock that is stopped is right twice a day. So, you know, maybe it's just a perception that every area of your life is blocked. That's not true. The fact that you, 
the fact that, that you could you are alive today and you could write into write into a ministry, though then that's not blocked. At least communication is not blocked. Your communication is not blocked. What you gotta what you gotta do is ask God and say, Lord, why is this why is this happening? It's like it's like uh, uh, Rebecca. She was pregnant with twins. And, uh, and she went to God. They were jostling in a womb. And she went to God and said, God, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? So that's what you, you, you got to do. Ask God. Because if, every, if you say, well, everywhere I look, there's a blockage. No. Then one thing, one thing you got to look for, Lord, is there, is there some area of my life where I've been disobedient? Is there some area of my life? Because the Bible said sin would separate you from God. So sin separates you from God. All right, You lose fellowship and the enemy comes and makes it seem like everything is done. There's no way that you could ever get away from. No way you could ever have breakthrough. No way you, you could ever have victory. That's what he does. That's what he But he's a liar. He's a liar. So you, you want to find and say, God, what area of my life that I've been disobedient? Is there some area of my life I'm not where I should be, Lord? Or, or some here, some place of my life that I should give up? I should give, up, give that up. Maybe there's some people in your life that you need to say, uh-uh, you're bad for me. So... All I'm saying is that if you're looking and say, well, everywhere I look, there's blockage. No. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, He is the way out. He says, I am the way out. I'm the way out. So, so Jadine, that's why I, 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 I just tell you to look. Are you reading, for instance, are you reading your Bible? Are you reading your Bible? Are you fellowshipping with God's people? Are you are you in fellowship with people that, who will encourage you? Sometimes when we're going through a situation, we get, kind of get tunnel vision. We can't see the forest for the trees. But a godly person in your life can help you to see things differently from another perspective. Okay? And they will pray with you. They can pray with you and, uh, and, 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 and like just, just show you something from, from Scripture that you'd never seen before. It's because God has put them in your life. So you can ask God, Lord, I need someone in my life, Lord, who can help me through this, uh, this time I'm going through. Jennifer writes in, she said, Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 and verse 3, says, this is eternal life, that they would know you and the one you have sent. Yes, that's eternal life. When Jesus prayed, the great high priestly prayer in John chapter 17, all right, is to know God and know Jesus Christ. The, 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 you know, Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 says, Let not the rich man boast about his riches, or the strong man boast in his strength, or the, or the wise man boast in his wisdom. But it's not that he shouldn't boast. It says, Let him who boasts boast in this, that he knows me. Do you, do you know God? Do you know God? The only way to know him is through Jesus Christ. The How do you get to know Jesus Christ? Through the Word. That's how you get to know Him. Through the Word of God. Yeah. He's there on every page. Yeah. Especially at this time. At this time, you know, and now, uh, we we're coming on to the season. Get to know. Get Start mm. reading mm. every day. It's f the Bible says it's food for your soul. It's food for your soul. Mm. It's okay. like in a marriage, uh, Dr. Coval, you know, it's like a marriage. Amen. You know, the, you, you walk down the aisle and you say, I do. And you give a kiss and whatnot. And after that, you have no communication. No communication, yeah. No. Mm. And then that's why I draw cold. Amen. 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 But God is saying, I'm waiting for you Amen. to come back to that first love. Amen. The agape love, the... the uh, in Greek, uh, you are a scholar of Greek and everything. Uh, koinonia, they yeah. call it. Koinonia. Yeah. Koinonia, yeah. right? I, I hope yeah, I'm koinonia. saying it right. Yeah, exactly. Koinonia. Yeah. 
uh, uh, the, the fellowship, the inter, interpersonal relationship, saying, come on, come on. It, God is, he, he is Amen. so, I mean, it doesn't matter. Amen. He's, he's saying, come on. Amen. I'm waiting for you. Amen. Yes. And uh, uh, you know what? Uh, I, and, uh, I just want to take, uh, th there's a, a great friend of mine, uh, an evangelist, and, and uh, he, is, uh, he started uh, like he travels the world. And he's been on his, he's been on his mind, been on his heart, to do, uh, to do a work here, because he's been all over the world, and, and God has opened his heart, uh, put it on his heart to do a, a work here. So, he, he was praying about it. God, where, sh where do you want me to start something? He said, I, I don't want to go in a church. I don't want to. Where do you want me to start something, Lord, to make you known? And uh, and so God laid it on his heart in Toronto. Uh, in Toronto and um, and I, I just if you want prayer because he's a praying person I, I uh, just a, a praying man of God and uh, as I say he, he's going all over the world uh, and uh, Pastor Fred Mitchell Pastor Fred Mitchell he is so he's, he's begun a ministry uh, it, it's 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 an in St. Dennis Drive in Toronto. It's an, it's an, it's in the library. And every Sunday afternoon, every Sunday afternoon, if you're looking for prayer, uh, put it put it up back for me, uh, my friend. Yeah, if you're looking for prayer, would you just take this address down and come? Just it doesn't matter what it is that is going on in your life. It doesn't matter what's happening. If things are happening or not happening or, or you're going through a time and you don't quite understand, a godly man that will pray for you, all right? It's 29 Cent Dennis Drive on the second floor. It's in the library. Uh, at, it, the area is called Flemington Park, Flemington Park. Uh, if, you, if you're around there or you could get there, it's Sunday afternoon at, uh, at 2 o'clock, 2 to 4.30, 2 to 4.30. If you, if you come listen it is you'll find somebody there uh, you know uh, most Sundays I'm there uh, to pray for you, uh, you if you have you're going through a thing you you know a sickness a disease doctors have given you bad news and so forth whatever it is just I invite you to come I invite you to come 29 sec St. Dennis Drive on the second floor it's in the library uh, okay uh, in Flemington Park okay uh, you know, uh, Beverly writes in, uh, she said, uh, but I'm afflicted and in pain. Let your salvation, O God, set me on high. Psalm 69, verse 29, absolutely. So praise God. Mm -hmm. He said, we receive God's healing tonight, healing touch tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You see what happens when the Bible says that healing is the children's bread. Amen. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Amen. healing belongs to you. Amen. Ask for it. The Bible says we get not because we ask not. Ask There's also some times is that we give up before <laughs> our miracle happens. Mm. We give up before. You know, it's w somehow we, 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 we're in this society. It's like, it's, it's like, you know, put on the microwave, you know, <laughs> put it on two <laughs> minutes, you know, 30 seconds. Okay. God didn't answer my, pray, my yeah. prayers in 30 seconds. Or we like, it's like going to the McDonald's, you know, I want one at number five. Yeah. I go to, you yeah. know, I pay one window. I go to, I pick up the thing <laughs> for another window, and I, I'm gone. I'm gone. Yes. No, nothing about, about persisting. Hmm. Nothing persisting about faith. persisting. The Bible says Jesus Christ, this is the Son of God. Yes. The Son of God, guess what? At the beginning of his ministry, he went into the desert. He fasted 40 days. 40 days he fasted. Mm -hmm. Right? At the end, right, he, he prayed three times in the garden. He said he, he sweated, his sweats were like drops of blood calling to his father. Mm -hmm. But somehow we think, Oh, if I say, Lord, bless me, and it didn't happen, I didn't see some money fall from heaven mm -hmm. right in my, in my lap right <laughs> then and there. Oh, God has not answered my prayer. 
What about just persisting? I encourage you to persist. I encourage you to get in God's word and mm -hmm. say, you know what, God? You promised this. Mm -hmm. It is mine. Mm -hmm. I see it in your word. It is mine. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm claiming this promise for me. I'm mm -hmm. claiming my healing. And you say, well, everything is going wrong. Everything is going wrong. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what it says at all. Mm -hmm. you know, it says all things work together for good mm -hmm. to them who love God. Glory to God. So, Lord, even this is work. I don't know how. I don't understand it, God. Right. But I know this is working for good, good. right now. I, he says, you oh, shall, shoot, you know, it's, it says, you shall decree a thing. Job mm -hmm. 22 and verse 28. He said, you shall decree a thing, mm -hmm. and it shall be established. established. What do you decree? Not just anything. I decree your word, God. The Bible says God's word is, is forever uh, stands in heaven. Glory mm -hmm. to God. It's settled in heaven. Well, we settle it here on earth. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that settle it here on earth. This, we said, God, you've said this in your word. I claim it, God, for me. I claim it is for me, God, mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And I will not give up on that, God, mm -hmm. because your word is powerful. It's powerful and effective and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm not going to give up on it, Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't give up before your miracle, mm -hmm. but stand Stand your ground because the enemy, th th there was a, a situation where God sent an angel to Daniel, the prophet Daniel, and for three weeks Daniel was praying and, and, and he heard nothing. And then the angel showed up and he said, from the very first day you prayed, Daniel, God sent me. But I was delayed because there are some Prince forces, some demonic forces that were preventing me from coming to you, Daniel. What I'm saying, there's an enemy, and he has, a, he has a, uh, some demonic forces out there, you know, some demons to prevent what God wants to do for you. But you know how you get through? You get through by prayer. Pray. You get through by reading the word. You get through by fellowshipping. You get through with fellowship with God's people. It's, you get through by going to church, glory mm -hmm. to God. Going there, fellowshipping with God's people. You get through by praying for other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bible says, when Job, after Job, all it, he had he'd been through, when Job prayed for his friends, his healing came, his breakthrough came. Amen. What we're saying, go sow in somebody's life, sow in somebody's life. Mm. Glory to God, mm. sow in somebody's life. Mm. Uh, that's how, mm. that's how. Don't give up just before your miracle. Mm. Don't give up. Stand your ground. If it's here, if it's here, then it is. Okay. It's yours. Amen. It's yours. Amen. It's yours. Yeah. Glory to God. It's yours. D Dr. Yes. Google, please talk to the viewers about uh, how you taught me about taking communion. Please talk to them. Yeah. Please. Yeah, you, you know what? It's something that we do. We do, as, as, as you say, my brother, we do it every, every before right. every program right. here. We take communion. The breakthrough in yeah. the communion. B yeah. Yeah. Because it is, it is for, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, 1 Corinthians 11. The, the only ordinance Jesus left for us to do, right, is to take communion. It says his body and his blood. The, the John chapter 6 says his body is real food and his blood is real drink. I'm talking spiritual drink. Okay. Spi this, we're talking this spiritual now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Jesus says as often as you drink it. In other words, sometimes we do it in church it's, uh, once a month. Some churches don't even do it anymore. Mm. You know, mm. we, we do it once a month. But it says as often as you drink it. You know what? Why not take it every day? I do it every single day. Take a little piece of bread or a little piece of, a piece of biscuit and some juice, whatever it is. And I read First Corinthians chapter. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me read it. Read it for me, my brother. First Corinthians 11. First Corinthians 11, yes. verse 23 to 26. Uh, we just... We just and take it. And you know what? The Bible says, and you will see it when he reads it, it, it yes. says, this is my body which mm. is broken for you. Yes. So his body, it, what Jesus went through was not for himself, mm. but it was for you. It yes. was for me. Yeah. He says, you read it for me. Yeah. yeah. First Corinthians chapter 11, yeah. 23. Uh, for I have received from the Lord... Yeah. 
that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Yeah, hold on, hold yeah. on. Just hold. You know what he says? This is my body. Remember, he was not talking about cannibalism. He was right there with them. So he was not talking about cannibalism. It's spiritual. He says his body was going to be broken. I mean, he was going to be hung on a cross. Okay, they were going to nail him to the cross, but he was doing it for you. The reason he was doing it, he came to do it for you. He said, the Bible said, we, I read it before in, Philly, uh, um, in Isaiah chapter 53. He says, he says we considered him stricken and smitten by God. But no, he was doing it for you. He yes. says, whatever brought us peace to come to a peace, not only peace with God, but peace with ourselves and peace with each other. He was doing it for you. And he says, hear what he says. It's a command. Do this. Do this in remembrance of me. In remembrance of me. Do it, Jesus says. Can it be any plainer? So whatever you're going through, whatever I'm, I'm going through, I take communion. I say, God, if there's something broken in my life, I say, God, your body was broken for me. And for my situation, so Lord, I commit this broken situation to you. I commit it to you, Lord, and I take your broken body, that, and the Lord, I ask that you will absorb my brokenness, Lord. Show me the way. If, 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 I'm, if I need a way to go, and I don't know where to go, I don't know what to do, I take communion. And I say, Lord, show me. Open my understanding, God. Open my understanding to what, to where I should go, what I should do, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. That's it. Greet on my brother. Yes. Verse 25. Verse 25, it says, In the same manner, yeah. he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new testament or new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Amen. What he's saying, wow. remember the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you and for me. It was shed. It was done. Mm. He, it means he died. You he know, died. there's some people who say, he really didn't die. No, he died. And the Bible says, Colossians, in Colossians, the book of Colossians, whatever, all that was against us, he took it and nailed it to the cross. He took what was against you and nailed it to the cross. Mm. And he, he said, you drink this. Do it in remembrance of something. Because as, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, listen to this, you're proclaiming, proclaiming. his death. Yes. You yes. see, it's because divine. of his death, we have eternal life. Yes. Because of his death, we have life. Glory to God. Mm. Eternal life. Eternal life. He yes. says, do this as often as you drink it. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you have life in you. What I'm saying, whatever you're going through today, you're a Christian, you've given your heart to the Lord. And by the way, it is not for the non, it's not for the person who have never received. It's, we're not talking about something magical. That's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking about something spiritual, not magical, spiritual. So if you haven't given your life to the Lord, if you haven't asked Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life, or get that to, to forgive you, come in and forgive you of your sins, so you're, so you're righteous before God, all right, then no, this is not for you. Don't do it because you, if you take it then, you're taking and drinking death on yourself. 
Yeah. That's it's true. You yes. take and drink it there. You cannot, exactly. you, in other words, you cannot trample right. Right. on the blood of Jesus. Right. You cannot trample. You know, when the Israelites were, go which, which this signifies, when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, God told Moses, get the blood, put it over the doorpost, mm. the lintel and the yes, two sir. side posts, mm. never on the ground. You're not to walk over it. You're not to walk over it as a trample in the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ protects you. So when you eat it, when you eat the, the, the bread, it's like you're eating his body. I mean, drink is like you're drinking his blood, spiritual. Glory to God. And you're saying, Lord, mm. God, do with me. Create, Lord. Create in me a pure mm. heart. Lord, open way for me that I can't open for myself. You see, once, they, once the Israelites drank uh, uh, ate the Passover, which is what this signifies. Once they ate the Passover, listen, Pharaoh, the Bible, Jesus, God says, when you, when you do it, Pharaoh's going to drive you out of his country. Before he says, who is God? No. You want to break through? You want to break through in your life? Glory to God. Then take communion. Do what he says. Mm. Was, take communion. You want to break through in your life? Mm. You say, well, nothing is happening. You want to break through? And you're a Christian? Listen, Satan cannot pass over this glory to God. Mm -hmm. Because it's a, when, when they did it, they said that uh, in, in Egypt, the death angels, the death angel could not cross the door to get mm -hmm. into that house. No way. No. The people, and it's not because they were good people. No, it's not because they were good people. No, they were, a lot of them were idol worshiping people, but they were God's people through yes, Abraham, sir. Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob yeah. They belonged to him. And yeah. God said, rem God remembered his promise. He remembered mm -hmm. his promise. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Listen, mm -hmm. get breakthrough. Start taking communion. Glory mm -hmm. to God. Start taking communion. Mm -hmm. uh, we say, uh, let, me, let me just uh, uh, take a time. It's, it's you know what? It's, uh, I see... Let me just pick a time here mm -hmm. and get back to the uh, get back to the to what uh, to, says Jennifer. Jennifer says, "Let the redeemed of the Lord say so." Absolutely, Psalm one hundred seven and verse two. Yes, Jennifer, it's true. It is true. You know, sometimes we say all kind of negative things, yeah. all kind of negative yeah. things, and yet the Bible tells us some things mm -hmm. to say, and mm -hmm. we don't say it. Let the redeemed, of, let's say, to re be redeemed is to be bought, mm. all right? To be bought, or to redeem something, is to bite back. That's mm. what Jesus did at the cross. He bought us from the slave market of mm. sin. We were in the slave market of sin, and he bought us out of it. Mm. Not with silver and gold, but by his own blood. And Psalm 102 and verse, Psalm 107 and verse 2 said, Let the redeemed of the Lord, the Lord say so. Say, so. Oh God, I'm redeemed. Thank you for your redemption, Amen. God. Amen. Thank you for your redemption. Amen. Jack, Jack in Milton, she says, Pastor, the parable of the ten virgins is very fearful. That was my devotion this morning. L let me meditate. Let, left me meditating on the word. Ah, the ten virgins, <laughs> uh, the ten virgins, that's yeah, true. Wow, that's a whole new <laughs> yeah, you know, program all together. They yeah. look alike. There were yeah. ten. They were all virgins. Yes. Ten. Yes. The Bible says five were wise yes. and five were foolish. Five were foolish. They looked alike. Yeah. They were all waiting yeah. for the, uh, for the, 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 the bridegroom, to come. bridegroom to come. To come. And he was the bridegroom was delayed right. in coming. Delayed, right? The delayed. delayed in coming. Yeah. And the Bible says that, it, the, you know, they all fell asleep. Yes. They so all. they were. They all looked alike. Yeah. They were all waiting for yes. the bridegroom to come. Yes. Right. And they he was the, he was delayed in coming, so they fell asleep. Mm. All fell asleep. Yes. But delayed. the five Not wise denied. one had oil, extra oil. Yeah. Right. And the foolish yeah. ones, no, they didn't bother with no, that. We don't really no, need it. No. We talked about it before. They yeah, say, you know right. what, don't give up before your miracle. No. There's some things you need to no. do. You know? yeah. Sometimes you, the you, Lord yeah. delayed yeah. In, on purpose yeah. to yeah. test your faith. So how far, 
how far you are willing Amen. to wait Amen. on this. Amen. Because you see, as you said a few minutes ago, uh, that the, the microwave Christianity, yeah. like poop, uh, oh, uh, I want it now. Because in North America, is, it's, we, we are accustomed that yeah. way. Yeah. If I may respectfully yeah. say, uh, we are uh, um, like that, like that, yeah. the healing, oh, wow. Uh, no. If you want a financial miracle, sow a seed. Yeah. Sow a seed. Even when I'm talking about sowing a seed, please, sow a seed on this ground at the cross ministry. Yeah. Tithing goes to your church. Tithing belongs at your church, the local assembly that you support of. You're a member of the church, your tithing goes there. But offerings, send it to at the cross ministry. Yeah. Everything cost. Yeah, you know, and, and, and listen, yeah. God, yeah, God, God blesses you when you do it. But just to get back to to the virgins, you know, not all of them that just know this is that. Remember, when they did show up, the doors closed, and God says, "I never knew you. I never knew you. I never knew you." Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes, like you can be in church, and you're not really saved. You, you hear that? As a matter of fact. The more you hear the gospel preached, is the harder your heart gets. Hmm. Is the harder because every time you say no, I, I never forget. I uh, I was listening to Billy Graham and they were interviewing him mm -hmm. uh, before his death, and and he said, you know, they asked him what what bothers you, you know, mm. and he said, you know, he said what what bothers me is that I go and I speak before hundreds of thousands of people in the huge stadiums and he says some people come and and they have just enough just enough of religion to inoculate themselves against Jesus Christ that's right he, he said when I go overseas I go to my doctor and and I get all these <laughs> inoculations I get all these injections to protect me Mm -hmm. Okay, what they he said, what they do really is to put some of the little, a little bit of the, the disease in me, so my my body gets sensitive to it, mm. my immune system becomes yeah. energized to it right away, mm. and it knows how to attack it if it sees it. Mm. He said the same thing that people get just enough of of religion to inoculate themselves against Jesus Christ. So here are the ten virgins. They, they all look the same. All look the same. But they said there were some foolish ones. Five of them were foolish. Five they were foolish. The they were inoculated just enough. You know what? I, I mean, I mean, they, they just like the festivities. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, the it, there's gonna be, there's gonna be, there's gonna be music. There's gonna be dancing. There's gonna be food yeah. to eat and so forth and so on. You know, in the banquet mm. house, mm. right? There's gonna be food to eat there, uh, and nothing about their spiritual lives, yeah. because oil speaks of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Nothing to speak of that yeah. the Holy Spirit was in them. Be you know what? I, 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 listen, I, I love the thing, and, and many people they go to church. Mm -hmm. They go to church and you know what they love? They love the singing, they love the fellowship and yeah. so forth. But, and the more they hear the gospel, if it's a Bible-believing church, the more they hear the gospel, their heart becomes harder and harder and harder. That's it. Their heart becomes harder and harder and harder. I'm saying, my brother, my sister, don't let that come to you. If you've never surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, your heart, mm -hmm. listen, there's no way. We talk about heaven a lot today. But there's no way into heaven mm. without going through him. Mm. Jesus says, I am the way yeah, and the truth, truth and, and the life. life. There's mm. no other religious leader that ever walked the earth that said those words. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, I think it's C.S. Lewis who said, if to speak that way, you either have to have the, be like a, a man with an IQ you know, <laughs> of a poached egg. <laughs> maybe or it's true you have to decide mm -hmm. he said mm -hmm. any man that would say these words you know he, 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 he just say well I am the way and the truth and the way. life no one comes to the father oh, but through me it. yeah or it's true mm -hmm. he's either that he's either he's a complete madman mm -hmm. or it's true mm -hmm. or it's true and he proved it mm -hmm. he proved it he died they crucified him 
and he rose from the dead. Mm. He rose. Every other religious leader that ever walked the earth, they're dead and you can go visit their grave. Mm. Jesus Christ, the God-man, died and he was raised from the dead. They, mm. The only thing they said, look, he's not here. Mm. He's not here. Every other tomb on earth is famous for who is, who is in there. Mm. Jesus' is fam his tomb is famous for who is not there. He's not there mm. at all. Dr. Cole, can I please yes. read this quickly? Yes. In the book of Jude, it says, uh, verse 20, it says, But you, beloved, building yourselves upon your most high, most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. Amen. Keep yourself in the most Amen. holy faith. Amen. Keep yourself there. Let me go, let's go to line we are, line two. Uh, hello, Monty? Yes, hi. Hi, Monty. Welcome to At The Cross Live. Yes. Hello, uh, Monty. Good morning to you, Corvo, and morning. to you too, Jude. Yes, hello, Monty. Morning, sir. Good yes. morning. This so. is a bit of a strange call because my computer is broken. Okay. Uh -oh. Yes, yeah, sorry. I'm not being able to... Uh, Okay. Listen to your show. Okay, yeah. But uh, I did talk to Martha a bit, and the devil hit me with a weak moment, and I said to her, I think I'm getting worse <laughs> well, in my pain. Well, and, yeah. Uh, she told me the corrective measures that I needed to be doing, and I've been blessed. You, you know what? And, and the truth is that sometimes you're going through a painful situation and the pain is getting worse. But have you noticed that when you say, oh, the pain is getting worse, have you noticed that? You never feel better? And you say, yeah, because hey. the, the word is so powerful. <laughs> ah, yeah. But you know what you say? And we're not saying it's still a lie. We're just saying that you say, you know what? God is pain. You may be getting worse, but God is is power is working in me right now mm -hmm. because when i when i when i when i'm in pain i say lord father god you the apostle paul came to you and you said we read it tonight in uh, uh, second corinthians chapter 12 yes. and verse 8 and 9 he said three times i prayed to the lord and mm -hmm. god says lord god says paul my grace is sufficient for you so lord i said you have a grace that for me right now father will you give me that grace lord Mm -hmm. Will you give me that grace right now in this situation? That's number one. Number two, I said, Lord, in, 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 uh, in Mark 11 and verse uh, 23, it says, you told me I can speak to the mountain. So God, whatever mountain I'm meeting, I can speak to it. So I say, I say, mountain of pain in the name of Jesus, get out of my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You are not welcome here. Amen. You're illegal yeah. in this illegal. body. You're illegal. You have yeah. no yeah, right no. in my body. No. So I, I command you in the Amen. name that's above Amen. every name, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, to get out of my body. Yes. That's it. So one, I, 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 I say, instead of just saying, well, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the pain is getting worse. Instead of just saying that, I say, pain, you may be getting worse. But I tell you this, that the power of God is working in me. Why? Because I prayed. I, I go to God and I pray to him. And when I pray to him, I believe that he's answering my prayer. I believe it is called faith. Yeah. I believe he answers my prayer. Mm -hmm. And so I, he said to talk to you. So I'm talking to your pain that you must leave Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And you know what? Then, then I, I, I pray and ask God, I say, thank you, Lord, for my healing. Because, Lord, I, I go through scriptures, healing scriptures. And I claim them. I say, God, this is mine. I claim the healing scriptures. I, I read them. And there's, even though I've memorized them, I, I make sure I, because the Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 says, verse 21 says, put them before your eyes. So I put them before my eyes. 
I put the scriptures before my eyes. I tell you, you know what? I have them in my hand right here now. Amen. You know what? I tell you this. Sometimes I'm almost, uh, I, I, I almost pity some people, some Christians. You know why? Because they don't know. You see, the Bible says, my people, Hosea 4 and verse 6, it says, my people, they perish for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Yeah. They perish for lack of knowledge. They don't know the principles that you go through. Uh, like, and and I, I go through it every day. But you know what? I, I know that it's mine. I know it's mine. What the Bible said is mine. I know healing is mine because God told me healing is a chi children's bread. So I know it's mine. It's, he said, eat all you want. I say, Lord, I receive it in Jesus' name. I receive it. So that's what, my brother, that's how, that's, how you, that's how you handle it. And, you know, I say, Lord, whatever it is that you want to teach me through this, Lord, Father, help me to hear it, to understand it. Help me to see it. Help yeah. me to see it. Because the children of Israel, guess what? They, what? The lessons they didn't learn, God allowed them. That's why they spent 40 years in the desert. They yeah. will go around the mountain another time. Because right. God will make you go around the mountain another time until you get what he's trying to show. So I say, Lord, open my understanding to what is it you're teaching me through this, Lord. In G I know, you did, Lord, you didn't cause it, but you had to have allowed it. And if you have allowed it, all things work together for good, Lord. Yeah. So I said, Lord, Father, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. Father, I love you. Show me, open my heart and my mind to what is it you're teaching me through this. Yeah, my brother, that's, that's how you do it. That's how you and constantly and, say, yeah. and and thank him. God, thank you. Mm. Thank you for another day. Because today is my day of salvation. Mm. That's what the Bible says. Today is my day. Now is my time. Today Amen. is my day. Amen. Now is my Because faith is always now. Hope is in the future. But faith takes hope 100%. and say, now. 100%. Now. Now faith is. In now faith is. God. Yeah. Now faith is. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Hull, uh, while you are talking, yeah. God is showing me uh, Monty's heart. Something to do with his heart. And all the way down. Uh, Monty, can I please pray for you uh, quickly? Uh, I would love for you to, to. Yeah, uh, put your hand on your heart right now in the name of Jesus. Not only Monty, if there is anybody else going through some issue on your heart and your lungs area, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command Lord God by his wounds, by his stripes, his heart is healed. Any uh, sort of arrhythmia or uh, high blood pressure, um, uh, the, 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 the heartbeat uh, goes higher, lower. Lord God, any issue, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Monty is healed right this hour, now, in Jesus' name. And Lord God, if there is any fluid uh, buildup in his lungs or any parts of his body, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I command that fluid to be drained off, dry up by the power of of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Today, Lord God, Monty have experienced, as Dr. Koval has mentioned, his body is a temple of the Holy Spirit from the crown of the head to the very sole of his feet, even the pain of arthritis or whatever, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, to be gone right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, so do you know what is wrong with your computer, uh, Monty? Uh, no, I'm, it's just not booting up. I had trouble with it before. I have a computer cell that's going to come pick it up okay. uh, and work on it Monday, so okay. he'll fix that. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. But Jude was right on. He was right on before about my eye. Yes. He was right on about, it's not so much my heart as it is my lungs. Yeah. They are filled, and nobody can seem to figure out why. Well, uh, well, you know, he prayed. prayer. He prayed. He prayed. Glory prayed to God. Over yeah. it. I put yes. my hands over my heart and Amen. my lungs. Amen. And Amen. I know, I know that that will be a blessing and Amen. that that Amen. will... 
Amen. Amen. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. It's called faith. Faith, mm -hmm. not just in faith, but faith in God's word. Mm -hmm. Faith well, we, in the we word think of God. By the five senses. Amen. And our five senses <laughs> betray us because yes. that's what Satan yes. uses to yes. manipulate us. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's <laughs> the faith that yeah. rises so far above all of that. Amen. Amen. And I have it, but I do have my moments of weakness too. Yeah, well, all of us. We all every, of that, it's called hum being human. Yeah. It, it, all of us. All of us. But you know what? Uh, I. It says. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3 to 5, it says, Take every thought captive, captive. and yes. make it obedient to Christ. Good Take, God. in other words, don't <laughs> allow a thought just to just roam, you know, freely in your mind. Yes. Don't allow it. Yes. You know, you look at it and say, does this line up with Scripture? Does mm -hmm. it line up with Scripture? Is this just my feelings that I'm, that I'm going by? Right. Or, or does it, God's word says it? And if, mm -hmm. if it doesn't, then say, no, I reject that. I reject that thought. I reject th those feelings. I say, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, here's what your word says. And Lord, I thank you for your eternal word, Lord. I thank you for your eternal word. You say, you've said your word will never return to you void or empty, but will accomplish the purpose for which you send it. But my brother, I got to go. Thank you so much for calling. We appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. And, uh, and, and Jadine called in again, uh, wrote in again, says, I'm listening, and I take your advice to seek God's face. Absolutely. Mm. Seek his face. Mm. Seek it. How do you seek his face? Through his word. Through, Through his, his word. word. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I believe, uh, okay, Marilyn, Marilyn McPherson. Oh, Marilyn, thank you so much. He said, bless good night to all of you and all the listeners of At The Cross Live. Thank you, Marlin. Thank you, Marlin, for your prayers. And thank you all for praying for us. And my brother, thank yes. you so much for being with us. Thank you. For being um, here. Dr. Yes. Thank uh, you yeah. for Praise God. Me. Yes. Praise really God. Thank you. Yes. And, uh, and you know what? Listen, this week, I, I, I encourage you this week. Get, read, read, get in the Psalms. Get, read Psalm 46. Psalm 46 this week. Psalm 46. Read it every single day, every day, Psalm 46. Let, let me close the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and the Lord himself give you peace. Till next time, bye-bye.